I have two collections in mind. Um, I have two collections in mind, quite strangely, from the same same year, same season. Um, but uh, they're kind of collections that reflect uh, kind of a little bit of how I felt when I when I saw them, or the, the feeling it gave me when I saw them. That I felt uh, were were kind of had that ethos of punk. Without the kind of, um, the, you know, the obvious one. I mean, I, I can think of designers that instantly, when I was asked the question, the designers instantly that came to mind were Margiela, McQueen, and Calm. And those are um, those are designers that, you know, a lot of the others have, have mentioned, and they're all valid. Um, but from a personal point of view, uh, going back at, you know, going back at the seasons and seeing how I kind of how I felt when the impression they gave me when I, I saw them, it was uh, Junior Watanabe Women's Fall 2006. Um, and it was a collection that was uh, kind of army layers. Um, do you recall the one I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I do. Army layers um, and the heads covered in like gaffer tape. Mark. Yeah. Uh, masks and studs, and I mean, I mean, remember seeing it and just thinking, you know, there was like bits of hair thrown, like pulled out of the plastic, and it just looked like a kind of, like a bit of a car crash. But I felt what it gave me this feeling was like this kind of movement, this kind of tribe, this kind of, you know rebellion, fetishistic, something that's beautiful but kind of almost painful. And I feel that, you know, punk, the punk movement, I feel it was like a movement originally. And how, you know, it, it's not something you can kind of pin, I, I don't think you can pinpoint when it kind of, when it when it started. I mean, once we all knew what punk was, it was over. It's like any, you know, any movement or youth culture or you know, it's as soon as you know, as soon as everyone in the house knows, as soon as it's on on television, it's kind of you know, it's done. Um, but I had this feeling when I saw this collection that that it kind of you know, uh, it felt punk to me. Mm. It felt punk in the spirit, and it and it moved me in a way like in that in that way of thinking, you know, that's radical, and that's that's someone who's who is different and wants to be wants to be seen. Um, and the other collection was um, Gareth Pugh, uh, first collection, I think it was, of the same season, 2006. Mm. Um, and from that perspective, it just felt, you know, in, in many ways, it's not really, it's not really, you can't really call it a punk collection. And I don't think that the, the, the anticipation from from him was to to create that but you know entering the auditorium sitting down watching the show and feeling the energy that was coming from this it felt like something was happening mm -hmm. uh, something very important in our you know in our the, the fashion kind of time calendar um, and that's, you know, to me, that's like how, how I felt about punk. It's like, you know, teddy boys, punk, blah, there's like periods of kind of tribal youth culture and, and Gareth's first collection was something of a real, you know, moment. Mm -hmm. And I felt, you know, there, there's very few times when you sit in a, in a show and you think, you know, you got to watch this space. Something really interesting is happening here, and the energy from the crowd. I mean, people were whooping and hollering, and it was, you know, it was kind of chaos. Mm -hmm. um, and it's something that you rarely feel uh, anymore. I mean, I did listen to a few of the other people and what they said, and it's something that um, I think a lot of people picked up on is that you know, the show season lately is being more and more of a straightforward process and uh, the moments that, you know, these moments um, happen less often. Mm. Um, so, I mean, those were two kind of significant, 
um, shows from my memory that I that I feel had that kind of spirit, mm. that spirit of punk. I'm so um, with that, that, go ahead. I'm, I'm just I'm so interested that they're both from the same season because. I don't know. I I know those were very specific collections that you mentioned, but do you think there was something sort of in the air that season, or is that just a coincidence? You know, is, was it about the collections themselves as individual things, or was there a well? Mood? It's it's funny. I asked myself that, and you know, um, I don't know if that. I don't feel that it was something that came out of that season. I mean, if we, we, you know, if I did some more research, maybe we could, like, you know, look at a political situation and get really intense about it and think if it was something, you know, that was going on at the time to reflect that attitude. Mm -hmm. um, but I was quite startled or surprised by that, 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 you know, they were both the same season. But I maybe it's just a coincidence. Mm -hmm. I'm also interested in kind of the, the definition of punk because for Gareth's collection, you know, you mentioned that it was... It wasn't really about the aesthetic, it was more the energy of being in that room and watching the show. Whereas with that junior collection, obviously the attitude was quite punkish as well because it definitely, you know, shocked people and made people sit up. But then the aesthetic of it is also quite punkish. You know, some of the codes of punk like the studs and the, the army and the military kind of references yeah. are quite punkish. Yeah, totally. I mean, I would say if anything, by definition, the junior collection was was definitely more in the kind of what we know as a spirit of punk. But I don't know what I've, what I feel is, you know, and I think a lot of people talk, touched on this, is that, you know, putting a nose ring on a, you know, have, including nose rings or, or piercings or, you know, mohawks on the runway seems to be a cliche concept of what punk is. Mm. Um, it's punk style, but it's not the punk spirit, mm. you know, um, and so I kind of, you know, for me, the people, what what's punk on the runway are the people who are trying to be, uh, who are aiming to be kind of individualistic and well, being, banging their own drum, I mean, truly, mm. and having that spirit of, you know, identity and, um, you know, wanting to be, wanting to be heard. Mm. So do you think something has to feel in some way new to feel really punkish? Because you mentioned that with Gareth, you, know, you said it just felt like almost like a turning point. Do you think it has to feel like a step forward in some way? Not necessarily, because punk can be very, I mean, it can be very re referential and, and have, you know, loads of layers of different time periods. Um, but I think it's, I don't know, it's not the newness. I think it's more uh, someone who is unmainstream. Mm. Mm. And by being, un, I mean, by being kind of, by thinking, by, by being individual, thinking what, what they want to think and doing what they want to do is, is, not, is not mainstream. Mm. Mm. Um, so I think that's, that's more, it, it doesn't have to be a new thing. But I think it comes from the spirit. Mm. That spirit seems to have been interpreted so sort of widely that, you know, you mentioned this when we were talking before when you said you'd listen to some of the other calls in this series and how people interpret that ethos in such different ways. You know, what is punkish and what's not? Yeah. Mm. Why do you think... But I mean, that? for example, I mean, like Lisa Armstrong's, you know, um, comments on on um, Liz Hurley, I think, was totally, totally valid as well. Mm. Um and you know, and an interesting perspective because it was, it's like, yeah, by all means. I mean, in in many ways, that was punk. You know, um, you know, I said about the mainstream. I mean, if you can stick your fingers up to the mainstream by being main and and being mainstream at the same time, I mean, there's nothing more punk than that, really. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, after you know, in terms of a style, I mean, you know when punk became a household name, it was already something that just kind of seemed to mock itself. Mm. No longer shocking, you know? Mm. Um, but yeah. One thing that I am really interested by, and a few people have said this, so I just want to pick your brains on it, is, you know, how uh -huh. 
the today, you know, you mentioned now it's kind of harder for designers to do what Jenya and what Gareth did at that point. You know, do something that feels really surprising and makes you kind of sit up and gets people, you know, cheering. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's the pace of fashion? Do you think it's, you know, the sense of competition? Is it because we're in a recession, so people are scared of taking risks? Like, why have we lost those kind of real punk designers? Or are there any that you'd pick out at the moment? I mean, I think, I think we haven't lost it. I think it's probably cyclical, like mm-hmm. a kind of, you know, a period of, you know, change and return and change and repeating history repeating itself and inevitably will have that. But if you look at like young London designers or, you know, it, there is a punk spirit, you know, and it's a time, that's the time and the place where they, where they, you know, really explore that. Um, as for some other, you know, other designers, maybe not trying to push the boundaries. That's, you know, that's, it's not a bad thing. And, you know, people, you know, not everybody wants to be wearing calm. Not everybody wants to be wearing Marjela. You know, people people do want sensible clothes. And maybe it's, uh, you know, what you mentioned or touched on is, um, you know, the pressure, the time pressure, and, and financial viability, mm. you know, as well. So everyone can't do everything, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's, everyone has their place. Mm. The punks have their place, and then, and then we also <laughs> need people who make clothes that we can actually wear. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, yeah, maybe. Mm. I mean, you know, I remember, I remember the punks, you know, being hanging out on the in the shopping center, and you know, in London on the streets, and you know, and it had its place. It still had its place, mm. um, but it's integrated more than than anything you know uh as time's gone by as and, you know i mean fashion fashion designers you know visual people picking up on trends and how to you know express themselves in in different ways and you know you could find a punk aesthetic in in something very mainstream that isn't you know a ring through the nose mm-hmm. um but it doesn't stand out as being something that's got a punk attitude or a punk you know a punk look mm-hmm. 